Okay, so as you'll be able to see, the next thing I'm planning to do with the wing mod are split flaps. What I've done is I've taken a couple pieces of 1 16th inch uh, ply, hobby ply. I've hinged them with four Dubro small nylon hinges and I'm uh, working on on the process of cutting them into the uh, wings. Now all I've done is very carefully with a sharp knife, a sharp utility knife, cut out the section on my test wing here, taken the hinged flaps and then very roughly just kind of slotted the, the back end where the hinges are, are set up. Hey guys, just a quick look at uh, how things are turning out. Use the poly C to stiffen and harden the flap area after I cut it open. So kind of just got them placed in there for now. But you can see the uh, flaps are going to be uh, going into their uh, things. Again, I'm going to sand the edges of the, the flaps themselves a little bit now, just to make it a little looser. While I put some filler in the bottom just to keep this nice and smooth. I'm just going to use some uh, spackle compound. Painter spackle compound. Just to kind of give it a little bit more level feel. And then I'm going to give it a, a spray on this whole area and call it a day. And then we're going to paint it up. Okay, I'm going to be very quick here. I'm going to have to switch my batteries. But the uh, new airframe actually came with the uh, airframe in inside of the uh, Park Zone Spitfire, but it was not taped down yet. So after taking off all of the various parts and the engine and and speed control and everything else, I uh, popped this open. You'll see that it was really, really, really not held together by anything other than the plastic uh, coating, which I just stripped off. It was actually pretty easy to strip off, although be careful back on this part of the on the wing. It's very, very flimsy on the tail horizontal stab and it'd be easy to bust it. Okay, so as you can see I've done the uh, servo mount for the rudder. I've taken an old elevator servo mount from an old parts zone airframe that was damaged. I did a little hatchy uh, attempt to clean up the firewall. It didn't work on one of my very first crashes. And I cut out the uh, elevator servo holder from it. Use some CA and kicker. And I placed it right beside the other one. So now we're going to have slightly offset and they'll be crossing of course from side to side as the, as the uh, control rods come back from it. But it should be uh, should be pretty solid because it's C8, it's it's on there good. There you go. Okay, what I've done is I've inserted uh, carbon fiber rod reinforcements along the back edge of the fuselage. In addition, while well, you can't see them, yeah, maybe you can a little bit in there, put a carbon fiber rod on either side of the horizontal stabilizer. Well, C8 the model together as I showed you earlier it was, a, it was quite you know, the two halves were really not together at all uh, just a tiny bit of some sort of glue that was releasing so I've just put home safe CA and kicker all the way along the edge of it epoxy actually in the in the heavy parts to, to seal some of these holes so we epoxied it along the top there make it really firm and then uh, like I said, I'm going to work on probably a little s bit of a reinforcement on the top here of some sort, and then we should be good to go. Okay. So, middle of the uh, process here. Got the flaps cut, painted. I'm going to do a, a little hand painting job on the inside of these to give them that full framing. And I'm going to slide in there. We've got it pre-slotted already for the hinges. Horizontal stabs ready to rock. Got the, got the color on the top. Still going to do the camel on it, I think. And we're starting on our fuselage. 
as you may or may not be able to see you've got a couple carbon fiber rods through there and way back in behind you can see some of the uh, Gorilla Glue drained down and, uh, and uh, expanded into the crack which gives me a little bit of tail weight I don't like but uh, overall it's not going to be an issue what I've done is I'm not sure if you can see it sort of a carbon fiber rod that kind of comes part way into the tail what I found on my last rudder mod was this little portion here when I cut the rudder out was very flimsy and the tail flexed hard when I did a lot of torquing when I was applying rudder now it's and this was kind of the hinge point right here for the torque it's actually pretty stiff right now so that that's going to be quite a bit better so put the uh, hole on the side to match the other side this has been sanded down or it had some damage from the uh, shipping process of course I've yet to uh, finish the camo on it there we go, off we go to the next step. Okay, as you can see, uh, I've done uh, the entire body, the glassing's done. I've done the uh, painting of the gray. I'm going to put the green camouflage on now. And then I'm going to paint the underside with the uh, sky blue. I put pinned hinges for the rudder in the back because I just found last time when I used the, C, the, uh, the CA hinges, I found it to be too stiff. I really like how the pin hinges work. I think they really just make for a nice, smooth, con consistent, and very appropriate uh, looking uh, rudder. So I'm just masking it right now. I'm going to cut out a bit of camel here, the camel coming up to the body, a little camel in here, and camel across the tail in green. And then uh, what I'm using is some historical or some actual flying models of the uh, Spitfire that are out there right now paint schemes where you see the uh, invasion stripes underneath yellow on the tip we're going to have the camo here and you're going to see uh, kind of a sky blue underneath so that's where we're going to go with the paint job the wing of course is uh, split flaps are in already just need to cut in the servos and then figure out the landing gear and then we're good to go on that. Okay, real quickly you can see I'm cutting out the servo flaps or servo uh, holders into the for the flaps into the bottom. I'm just holding the flaps down so they stretch. And I've done the paint job on the fuselage. Not done, but I've done the, the camoing striping. I'm gonna do this similar pattern on the uh, top of the wing and then uh, we should be in business uh, I'm going to just put the invasion stripes on it then match it together think about uh, how I'm going to mount the landing gear okay real quickly see 142.5 is what this thing should weigh out at that's a zeroed scale right now and 142.4 grams is what it's coming out at that's with the Glossed, painted, and uh, one servo installed, as it was before, which is the uh, the the uh, elevator servo. I have the socket set for or the uh, the servo mounting bracket set for the uh, rudder servo. Just waiting for that to come in with the uh, other body. And of course, I've got my cowl painted done the done the body here we'll just do some green touch up afterwards on some of this got the wing mount set and just putting spray it on the black part of the white stripes black and white stripes are the invasion stripes there we go Okay, as you can see, I've come a little bit well, so long on the uh, mod here. I've got the uh, Johnny Johnson uh, markings from uh, 
the historical representation of what uh, his Spitfire's markings were just pre-1941, uh, pre D-Day invasion markings. Uh, painted the canopy to deeper color green to match the uh, the camel. I've installed uh, my Turnigy 3536C1100 uh, motor on the uh, motor mount to the front. And so, and I've done a bunch of deckling on it. This, again, it's all historically accurate deckling. I've also the only thing that's not accurate in this, I, I admit, to, is completely just for my own uh, benefit. Johnny Johnson's plane had invasion markings in 1944 during the D-Day or 43 during the D-Day invasions, of course, but. Uh, did not at the time period that I modeled this on. He had a different uh, look to a Spitfire, actually a different, slightly different uh, camo as well for a Spitfire at that point in time. But in the interests of visibility, I've uh, modeled. Uh, I put the uh, invasion stripes on anyway. His went all the way around. I wanted to keep the top accurate from pre pre D Day invasion, the bottom accurate for you know kind of post but anyway so I've taken a little bit of a liberty there it's pretty close the rattles are all the same and then they're in the same position and everything that his were as you can see I put the e-flight uh, tail steel steerable tail wheel onto the uh, onto the rudder so it actually is a fully functional steering tail wheel didn't come with any kind of a grommet or anything so just took a little uh, heat shrink wrap and shrinked it onto the end of the thing there so that uh, it doesn't go anywhere so Plug in the battery and we'll give you a little test shot here. Okay, so I've got a lot of uh, touching up to do. I've got a little bit of work to do on finishing the paint and everything, so it's a long ways from uh, from done yet. But just to give you a sense of uh, the controls, I've got the independent airlines and they work very well. I haven't done any programming yet. Elevator, and what I'm happiest about is the rudder actually because it's just so smooth. No twist, no torque to it at all. Of course, the motor runs fine. And a neat feature is the split flaps. So, as you can see, it's coming right along. Uh, we've got a little bit of work to do yet, but I'm very happy. I was with planning that. to do Corsair landing gear and just attach them in the front. And I realized uh, I spent a lot of time working on this. I want this thing to have retractable landing gear. So now I'm going to have to. I've got retractable electronic, uh, retractable serverless landing gear coming. I'm going to have to move the wiring now, put it in front. The CG is right now just a hair. I'd say about uh, just a little less than a half a centimeter, or a little over half a centimeter back of where I want it right now. So it's not going to kill me, but when I put the landing gear up here with the retracts, it's going to bring my CG forward a little bit, and I think we're going to be built here. And that didn't have the cowl on it yet or anything, so we'll see. Anyway, I think it's going to work out really well. Uh, next videos will be for uh, showing you the uh, the final stage. Part three will be the final stage when the install of the landing gear, uh, and then uh, hopefully we'll be doing uh, some test flights with it. Thanks.